Joshman32 coming at you with some Battlefield 3 gameplay. This is me and my homie Blaze flying in the Viper on Caspian Border. Uh, right now we're playing on the 360, so it's only 24 man servers. Now, right off the bat, you can see an example of me uh, getting a little bit of tunnel vision right here. I pretty much ignore everything except for this jet. Right now, nothing's in the air except for him, so it's not that bad. Uh, but I do get close to where enemy stingers could be because I'm pretty close to C and B right now. And I also allow myself to get snuck up on by this jet behind me as you see him right now. Um, luckily he's using heat seekers, so he's relatively easy to avoid. I just dive to the ground and get below radar and then he ends up crashing so it's no big deal. Um, I usually spend most of the game trying to stay low to avoid stinger locks or um, air to air locks, especially when I notice that the jets are using uh, heat seekers. That just pretty much confirmed that I can avoid a lot of the lock ons that I'm going to have to deal with by just staying below radar. Um, I know below radar is not effect it doesn't affect stingers anymore, but it still helps because of all the cover that's on the map. Um, the cover, in order to use it on a map like Caspian Border, um, you're gonna have to be extremely low, like like how low I am right now. You, you have to in order to avoid stingers. Like they they can still get locks on you even even through trees sometimes. So you have to be really careful with that kind of crap. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to pod rocket a lot of the uh, jets lately. Even from a distance like that far, this is actually another example of me just getting way too much tunnel vision, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know why I'm still chasing this guy. He He's obviously not a threat to me anymore, I mean, but that's a good way to get snuck up on though, is to just allow him to come back and swing back around at you, but that's the tactics that jet like, jets like to use. Um, here's a good example of chopper to chopper action. Um, I try to get the uh, advantage by tricking him into giving up his advantage. Um, I, I made him overcommit by bringing him in closer to my spawn and past point A, which we have control of, which means that there's probably allies there with stingers, which is actually what caused him to have to pop his flares that second time. Um, I also stayed below radar to try to get uh, the advantage on him. He, he gained a height advantage by doing that, but he ended up, ended up tricking him into giving it up. Nine times out of ten, a bad chopper pilot will allow you to let him, or will allow you to get height advantage on him, even though he has height advantage on you already. Um, I, uh, I just wanted to take advantage of the below radar so he couldn't lock on to me. That's the biggest way that uh, another chopper pilot's going to take you out. Um, Later in the video, you're going to see how this comes to bite me in the ass, actually. It's it's the way we get taken out for the first time. Well, sorry for the spoilers, but... I just... yeah. <laughs> As you can see here, um, now that all the air threats are out of the way, like, the chopper is usually my biggest threat, and especially now that the other jets are actually only using heat seekers on me, I can concentrate on the ground. Um, I usually go for armor first, but I love infantry. I love taking on infantry, especially on Charlie. Uh, that's probably my favorite thing. My favorite thing to uh, attack is because most of the time um, people are going to have a hard time coming at you. And this is me trying to protect my squad mates. I I don't know these people. Like the only person I'm working with right now is Blaze. The other squad mates I'm trying to help protect because. They can see what I'm commanding, what what I want them to attack, because I'm I'm party leader, I'm squad leader. So every time I hit select on one of these things, they can see where I'm attacking. Um, I actually don't like that, being a pilot, because I'm trying to spot everywhere, every every objective I try to spot at, and spot and attack or defend an objective is the same. So every time I go to try to spot something, like I just tried to spot on Charlie. Uh, it, it just clicks on Charlie and it says, it says attack this objective and then I go real quick over to B or real quick over to A real quick and all of a sudden now now oh, attack this objective oh attack this objective it keeps changing it doesn't help my squad mates much it's better 
for me and for others if I'm actually not the squad leader and somebody else on the ground is the squad leader because then that'll tell me where they plan on attacking, where they plan on heading. That can help me help them by, even when I'm not communicating with them, by simply using that simple command. Um, but for me it's kind of a waste. It actually overrides the audio cue to tell me what kind of person is there if I spot a person. Because the render's distance is so low on a console, I can't see anything, but I can spot them. Like, I'm spotting right now at B, and nothing's showing up, but what I have to do is sit there and listen for, oh, I spotted this guy on, like, it usually it tells you what specific person is there, like, what kind of class is also there, like, oh, we spotted an enemy sniper, oh, I spotted an enemy recon, you get it. Basically, you get it. Most, on, most often on a map like this, an enemy engineer is an enemy anti-take personnel is what you hear the most often times. If I don't hear that cue, then I know that I've got to move on to another objective before I before I have to overcommit and fly over it to see. But if I can't hear that cue, then it kind of takes away from me. So being squad leader is actually a disadvantage when you're flying uh, because you can't listen to that audio cue. This is uh, another example of me trying to take advantage of the areas that we can, tr can control. I'm trying right now to get rid of that self lamp. Um, this is also an example of bad communication. I wanted Blaze to go after the self lamp that was on the ground, but I'm not quite sure if it got taken out or not. Um, I actually come back over here and it's gone, so somebody else wants to take it out. I'm just not quite sure how that happened. Um, but he ended up trying to go for the jet instead which I wish I had known that that's what he was going for, but um, we just need to, I guess, like, we're not actually, we, we work together, but I haven't really flown with him much. We show good potential, but we just sometimes make mistakes like that. Um, this is another example of me trying too hard to protect the objectives. Like, I, I probably could have stayed at Charlie and ended that, stopped that. I think I might have already anyways, though. So I just moved on to the next whatever I can find at Charlie. I moved on to this to try to end Delta. And uh, this is what the, the chopper should be used for. You shouldn't base rape. You shouldn't do anything like that. You should always continue to try to maintain air control and maintain objective control as much as you can. Because uh, the chopper can move so quickly across the map like not as quickly as jets or, or anything like that, mind you, but uh, we can, it can move so quickly across everything that whenever you see something flashing, it's a good indication that there's someone there. It's actually a definite indication that someone's there. Um, it, it, it helps you to be able to know where you're needed without communication. Like you see the flashing D right now. I'm I'm more worried about the armor right now because that's my that's also my job is to take out enemy armor and enemy uh, helicopter. Now that the helicopter spawned, I got to take that out. Here's another example of me taking advantage of below radar. But I'm really overcommitted at this point. I'm behind his base. The AA tank can get to me right now, or the emplacement rather, can get to me right now. I don't know how those missiles missed, but I ended up pod rocking them and, and take them out. My gunner is good. He's, he's really good at what he does. Um, he basically disabled him by himself, like, I, my missiles didn't work at all there, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but that was a good example of me taking advantage of below radar to give myself the advantage. Once again, um, I was earlier pod rocketing. Pod rockets against jets is something that's difficult to do, but it's something that can really help you because a lot of the times, you won't get hit markers when you went in a situation like that where they're so close to you that you could just point blank dumb fire them and you're going to get hits. But uh, the uh, the rockets don't have enough time to lock on. Like the air rockets, I barely had enough time to get a lock on them. I got my two rockets off, but he was able to flare and avoid them, so it didn't really do much. Pod rockets will at least try to scare them away. Um, 
As you can see here, I'm starting to run into more problems with stingers. I'm getting shot down, uh, things like that. It, you got to be really careful when you put your when you put your helicopter down. You want to put it down in such a way that you're not going to get sniped or tanked or anything. Like you, you especially don't want to lose your helicopter. You don't want to put it in a position where it can be stolen. That would be the worst thing for you right there. Uh, getting it stolen would be bad because then you, you you're without a tank or uh, you're without a chopper until it until you can shoot it down or you can get them down um, so you always want to land far away from people you don't want to allow them to take it off of you and this is an example of me right here not taking advantage of below radar and then deciding well maybe I should take advantage of below radar because I'm using ECMs I have to be close to the ground for a guaranteed deflection anyways so I turn around and here we go came to bite me in the ass I just I lost I ran into a good pilot he was able to take me out with pod rockets he didn't need his heat seekers and that was the end of that here's a we cut to where I get the chopper back and we go on another decent run. This is a large lobby. Uh, we were losing when we first joined. Um, we're still losing now, but by less. If, as you can see, um, just that little bit of time with me not in the not in the air. This is what happened. We lost control. We we were all capped, but now we're not. Now we have to start working our way back to where we were. But this means more action on the ground for us. Um, a lot of the times, I'm not looking for kills. I'm, I'm looking for whatever I can get. Assists, spot bonuses, squad driver assists. I, I don't care what I get. I'll, I'll take it. I like points. I'm not really concerned about kills as a pilot. I'm worried about deaths as a pilot. But one big thing is to set up the gunner for kills. Um, I'll go in and try to do as much damage as I can and get the kills that I can. But, uh... The gunner should be getting most of your kills. Like right there, I, I, that was a good kill. That was a good kill for me. But that was also because he was going for somewhere else, someone else that he saw that he was going after. And I went after the person that I saw. We're both calling out everybody that we see. Everything that we see, we're calling out, spotting, everything like that. It helps, it helps not only us in the air, but whoever's on the ground trying to assault that objective. Um, right now, I'm just trying to clear it out as much as I can, wherever I can, because they own most of the map. And a lot of my, um, a lot of my troops on the ground are actually uh, spread out pretty far. Like it, you can see at Delta right here, there's a tank down there, and I do believe he's actually running into some trouble. There was somebody shooting at him. But uh, I didn't notice that when I was first flying this. Um, I also, I, I tend to randomly check everywhere anyways. I especially love checking for Charlie because that's a good place to spawn for a ground trooper. A ground trooper can spawn at Charlie if they control it and head to any of the other objectives on foot and get there relatively quickly. So you'll, you'll catch a lot of people spawning there just to travel to another place. Um, I always try to back up my squad or whatever squad seems to be doing the most work. Uh, right now I'm trying to take out the air support because that seems to be the biggest threat. Right? They're mostly, the jets are mostly ignoring me at this point. They're, they're going after ground targets just like I am. So I'm trying to harass them a little bit more so they can pay attention to me a little bit more. Um, the, the jets that are in the air are using heat seekers. They've been using heat seekers all game. They're not gonna. They're not that big of a threat because of that. Um, there would be a much bigger threat had they had a little bit of accuracy and just shot me with their guns. That's the worst thing that you could do to a helicopter is just shoot them down with your guns as a jet pilot. That's something you should remember. Here I go again, doing the same move that got me killed last time, but hopefully with different results. Let's see what happens. Uh, I get down below radar, and uh, I lost him. I, I turned my back to him. I'm trying to use air radar to figure out where he's at, but he's already coming down on me. Uh, 
Blaze is calling him out, screaming at me, like, did, you know, but luckily we got a little bit of help, and I got, I ended up getting the kill. He also didn't have a gunner, which helped us all a lot, too. Um, here we go, we're going to head to, I forget where we head, probably to Charlie again, because I see dead bodies up there. I, uh, that's something I also look at as a pilot. Um, on console, there's not that much going on compared to, say, PC. Like, this this is way less action-packed than a, than a 64-man server. You, you can go to on a 60-man server, 64-man server, and run into people everywhere. Like, every objective will have, like, 10 guys. Not so much on this. And here I go, getting stingered again. As always, trying to land softly so you can, or on the skids, so you don't get too much damage. Um, with stingers, the good thing about stingers is they leave you, if you have 100% damage, or 100%, they leave you with well over 20%. So you have a lot of time. You're still disabled, but you have a lot of time to set your gun down to set your, your helicopter down and re make repairs. You have a lot of time versus like if you got hit with two heat seekers, you're gonna have less time because it drops you down to like somewhere in between 20 and 15, 20 and 10 percent. Here I am getting caught off guard again by the enemy chopper. Um, my timing's a little off today because I haven't played in a while about the spawn times for the enemy chopper or anything like that. Um, but I get pretty lucky here. My um, my heat seeker has hit him even though he ECM'd and uh, it's a good thing too because I was locking onto the jet afterwards it, whatever, for whatever reason it wouldn't lock back onto him um, I had advantage I was going to win that fight there was nothing that he could have done either way but it's good that it ended the way it did because uh, um, not locking onto him was kind of a disadvantage to me because I also had more than one thing going after me uh, Everybody's starting to come after me more. We're, we're winning a lot of battles. We're causing headaches for everything on the ground and in the air. So a lot of things are starting to come after us now. Um, stingers, the jets are coming after us more. The enemy helicopter is just trying to take us out. They want us down so bad. Um, we're still losing, but we, like I said before, we're catching up. Like. Uh, the objectives are going back and forth still. We're, we're not bleeding too many tickets, but neither are they really. They're, they're bleeding more tickets than we are right now, but uh, it's not enough to win this battle, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, that was an example of how much the Stingers are affecting us right now. We're even at like, we have control of A, but we're still getting locked on from something that's near A. But for whatever reason, um, they're not going after the objective, they're going after us. Uh, here we go again, going after the chopper. I'm not quite sure... Oh, that's why. we I forgot about that. Uh, Blaze hopped out in the middle of this chopper battle because he was trying to uh, lock on to him. Or uh, you shoot a TV missile at him. Instead, he hit B instead of Y to switch to it, and it kind of threw him off. He had to he had to parachute down, and I had to go pick him up. It's kind of a example of how we haven't been playing lately. Like uh, we just started getting back into this because we're we're all excited about um, we're all excited about Battlefield 4. We really want to do well in Battlefield 4, and I. I hope that we can keep this chopper team together once Battlefield 4 comes around. Um, it all depends on what consoles we decide to get or if we decide to move to PC. It's all up in the air right now for me, so I'll have to talk to Blaze about that actually, as a matter of fact. Um, here I am assaulting C. I just, I, I love it. I love going after C, especially when they control it. Um, I want to see that get, I want to see that on our side. I want to see C capped on our side. Um, once again, Stingers coming at us again. We're getting, not only that, but we're getting locked on again. So I have to, I actually ditched Blaze just now because he land, I landed and he thought we were going to get out, but I, I was still getting locked on, so I had to keep going further so we couldn't get locked on anymore. 
I didn't want to I didn't want to have to deal with that the second we came in. And you can tell me my timing's all off because he wasn't there to help repair. But instead of getting back out, I knew he was coming up, so he he just finished repairing and hopped in. And then we took off. And here we are off again. Now I'm trying to find where that steering user was. He's obviously near A because of how far he can reach. Um, you can tell kind of, uh, stingers have a 400 meter range. That means that uh, if you look at the objectives and you can tell what's 400 meters away, you can kind of get a good idea where your uh, stingers are going to be at. Like if you turn around and you see that A was 400 meters away after you just broke the lock, well then that's probably where he's at, somewhere near or I mean, it's it's bad when they're just hiding somewhere random and they don't have any, like, rhyme or reason to where they're at. They're not really helping with the objectives. They're just there to fucking piss you off and launch, launch stingers at you all day to just annoy you and lock you down. That's kind of, it's kind of hard to find them at that point. But uh, if they're helping their team, then they can be relatively easy to try to figure out where they're at by judging the distance of uh, what is able to be locked on and what's not. Here's another example where pod rockets probably would have helped out a lot better, especially with an accurate gunner. An accurate gunner, he, he doesn't need to put, he can put a whole round, if he, if he puts the entire clip into a jet, they're gonna get disabled. If I put one or two pod rockets into a jet and he puts in three quarters of his, of his uh, clip into a jet, then he's going to be heavily damaged. They, they're going to think twice about coming back at us. And here's, a, you know, uh, here's another example of us not not used to the game anymore. I crashed. Um, but luckily, we both had the, the right state of mind to hop out. Uh, if you hop out when you crash lightly like that, you can usually avoid uh, losing your helicopter. Uh, you can you can hop out, repair it real quick, and hop right back in because it'll usually catch on fire, but it usually won't uh, die on you. And this was an example of, of us miscommunicating again too. Blaze had said he had got that guy, and then he was like, "Well, no, 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 wait." And I was like, "Are you sure you got him? Are you sure you didn't get him?" I started going after the objective, and he's like, "No, he's taking off." So I had to turn real quick and go after him again. And as you can see, the jets are just all up and down me right now. They're both flying at me, but ECM's making it to where their job's really hard. They, they're they still still trying to lock onto me with heat seekers. And I'm so used to it now that every time I see a lock on and I look at the radar real quick, I can tell real quick what is locking onto me. If the jet's locking onto me, then I ECM right away. Just, just to get them, just to get that... Um, out of the way. They, if they can't get a full lock onto me, then that means that they can't. They have to switch to guns. They can't. They can't lock onto me anymore. They, 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 they just wasted their pass. Most of their pass trying to get a lock that they're actually not going to get. Um, in a server where there's a slight, bit, a little bit of lag, you're going to actually. They're going to be able to get one or two missiles off anyways. Which is okay, because they're still going to waste their run, because you're using your ECM, and you're going to avoid their missiles. There's just no if ands, or buts to that. Um, the game's getting pretty close to the end. Uh, we caught up pretty well because of these two long runs that we've had. Uh, we had a couple of runs in between, and then we got jet rammed. I forgot about that. That jet ram sucked so bad, because we were in such a good run. Um, it's what you got to deal with when people are using heat seekers. You just never know what they're going to do. Um, a, a thing that I, you know, I always really dislike stingers. I, I don't like it when they're in the air. I don't like it when people are using them against me. But I have no problem using them against another pilot if they're in my spawn zone. If they're going to come base rate me after I've been in the air for 10, 15 minutes. They're gonna come around, come around, and make sure I can't get back up in the air and destroy them. I'm gonna use a stinger on them. I have no qualms about it. I usually don't use it in the middle of a map, or where they're, where I'm basically base raping them. I don't, I don't agree with that. 
but if you're going to come along and try to watch my helicopter spawn and shoot me down before I even get the takeoff, you're going to get a face full of stinger. And that's what happened right there, right at the beginning of this run. I got, I got two kills. Why? Because he overcommitted. Obviously overcommitted because he's in my spin. He was in my spawn zone. Yeah, unfortunately, you guys didn't see it because I edited it out. But you saw the kill feed. I was right there waiting for the helicopter to spawn. Here comes the helicopter again. And this one is a decent run. Pretty much the same tactic over and over again. Get below radar. Hit him. Get below radar. Now this is actually a little different because the only person that really sees me and is going for me is the gunner. The other guy has a different agenda from the looks of it. He's trying to get to the needle. But I don't want to let him get to the needle. I want to destroy his helicopter so he has to wait for it to respawn again. That way he's over there in deployment, not doing anything, not on the objectives, not harassing my players with sniper rifles. I probably should have let, on second thought, I probably should have let him go up there because he was going to end up crashing the helicopter anyways and probably killing his gunner, costing them a ticket. And then he would have been up there on the needle, wasting time, not doing anything. But, eh, I mean, it's what, you, what can you do? I like going after helicopters. I like helicopter versus helicopter fights. I think that's the bread and butter of a pilot. That's what will show you if you're a good pilot or not, whether or not you can handle those kind of fights, um, what you can do during those fights is, um, yeah, basically what shows it. And I'm not just talking about heat seekering too, or you effectively using your, uh, your countermeasures. I'm talking about using, being able to effectively use your pod rockets against them too, everything like that. Like, uh, I think that's where you get most of your kills, actually. That's where I get most of my kills as a pilot, is from other jet, other chopper pilots coming at me and uh, fighting them. And here's a guy that's trying to use below radar. And I'm not doing too well with the pod rockets, but he still doesn't have the advantage on me because I'm able to avoid any kind of lock from him before I can get, before he can get a lock on me, I get my ACM back, and he really doesn't have much of a chance anyways, because we just kill him. I mean, he, did, he didn't lock onto us at all. He didn't really, I don't know if he knew what was going on or whatever, but we took him out. <laughs> that was my favorite kill right there, because I, I, as I'm thinking it, Blaze is saying it, that I'm going for that double right there, right at Charlie. And here I am crashing again, but another example of us hopping out and saving the chopper. It saved us a minute and a half and a long walk back to, the, back to the spawn to get the chopper back up. Just because we bailed out instead of going down with the ship. Um, there's an example, though, of where you have to be extremely careful. You don't want to do that if you're in enemy territory. I mean, I, I would probably do it anyways, but I would be really careful as to uh, whether or not I just let the chopper destroy itself or if I attempt to repair it. Like, um, usually you want to be careful. You don't want them to steal it, like I said before. Um, I was right in the middle of the map. Like, there could have been a guy right there. He could have shot me out. He could have shot my gunner, and he could have took our helicopter, and we would have been screwed. But uh, it, we got away relatively unharmed, which is a good thing. That was a really good thing, because that could have been bad had we had let them take our chopper right then. Or had we had to respawn the chopper, actually, because the game's getting close to the end anyways. It would have it been bad for us. Here we go again, taking out the chopper. I'm setting my gunner up here to destroy the chopper and to kill the infantry on the ground that bailed out because I'm pretty sure that whoever was piloting bailed I didn't get a kill, I'm pretty sure uh, Blaze didn't get a kill either so that's probably what happened at this point I'm flying a little too low to the ground and a little too fast over the objectives for us to be able to effectively kill anyone but I turn around and make up for it and we get the kill anyways um, 
that was probably a decent play for me. Uh, I'm setting up right now. I, I'm not really worried about getting kills. I'm just setting up my gunner for kills. I help a little bit when I come back around, but for the most part, I just want him to get the kills. I, I don't want to worry about it for the most part. If I see an easy kill, I'm going for it though. Jihad Jeeps, I love you. I love Jihad Jeeps. They're awesome. Just keep on coming at me with those things, please. Unless I'm in a tank. Stay away from me then. But uh, if I'm in a chopper, yeah. Yeah, you keep on trying. Oh. Alright guys, that, that just about wraps up the match after that jet kill. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe and like. This is Joshman32. Thank you.